Hello, Miss Roll here with your notes on work. For this video, our learning target is I can describe, explain, and calculate work. As we get started in our definition of work, I want you to think, how do you use the word work in our everyday conversations? You might say something like, today I went to work or shoveling that driveway is a lot of work, right? We use this word a lot, but it means something really specific in the science world. So we kind of have to separate it in our minds, how we use it in our everyday life, and then how we use it in science, what it means when we say something is doing work in science. So we think about our science definition here. In science, work is done when a force causes an object to move in the direction of the force. So let's think about that sentence one more time. Work is done when a force causes an object to move in the direction of that force. So for work to be done, two things have to happen. First, a force must be applied to the object. We talked about what force is and how force can be applied to objects when we learned about Newton's laws. You can go back to those notes if you need a little refresher. Second thing is that the object must move in the same direction as the force applied. Force gets applied, object moves in that same direction. So direction is really important when we talk about work. If it's not going in the same direction as that force is being applied, there's no work. Another thing to think about is if it's not moving at all, if there is no motion, then there is no work. No motion, no work. These are several things to keep in mind. But if you can remember, it needs to be a force and move in that same direction. You can figure out the rest of it from there. We are gonna talk through a few examples here. So first example, if you are pushing on a wall with all your might, but the wall doesn't move, have you done any work? So I'm gonna draw a little picture here so we can think about this. I've got a wall and I've got my little person standing at that wall and pushing as hard as you can against the wall. Lots of force. So we've got force going on. A force is being applied. But then that second thing for work to be done is it moving in the same direction the force is being applied. Our wall here is not going anywhere. And so because that wall isn't moving, we've got no work. No motion, no work. Our second example, if you are using force to hold a rock over your head, while walking across a field. Have you done any work? So let's think about this again. So here's my little stick person, not an art teacher. Here's the rock that they're holding over their head. So we're kind of applying that force up, right? To hold the rock over your head. And then you're moving to the east. Let's say that's this way. So I've got a force and I've got motion, but is the force in the same direction? And if you can look at my picture there, you'll see our force is going up, but our motion is going sideways. So in this case, because they're not the same direction, we have no work. The force has to cause moving 
in the same direction. Let's do a couple more examples here. If you are using a force to pull your suitcase across the airport, have you done any work? Okay, so let's think about this. So we have our suitcase and it is being pulled across the airport, right? So going a long distance, moving in that direction. So I've got a force, I'm pulling on that suitcase and I've got motion in the same direction because the suitcase is going with you. So in that case, you have in fact done work. Little check mark. Because that suitcase is getting pulled in the same direction. Our last example here, if you do a full push up, meaning lifting yourself up and back down, have you done any net work? So that word net means through the whole situation. So in this case, I started here, went up, and then went back down to end in that same spot. There's no change in position. And because there's no change in position, I don't have any distance, displacement, meaning nothing moved in terms of work. So in this case, I did not do any work. So again, we kind of have to think, doing a push-up sounds like doing work in how we use it in our everyday conversation but we have to think about what it means in our science conversations and our science world. Separate those two things. Now we need to think about calculating our work. So work is force times distance. That's our equation here, force times distance, which if you think about the definition and the examples we just went through, it makes sense. Force and distance. Those are the two things uh, that we were talking about needing in our uh, examples. We also write it as work equals force or W equals F times D. Uh, and we do this because scientists are lazy and we like to abbreviate everything. So we abbreviate uh, work with a W, force with an F, and distance with a D. We also need to remember that all numbers need to have units. They don't mean anything if they don't have a unit. So our unit for work is joules. Our unit for force is newtons. And our unit for distance is meters. Okay, we have abbreviations for all three of those as well. Capital J, capital N, and, cap and lowercase m. But again, our overall equation is force, work equals force times distance. The more force that you do, the more work you do, which sort of makes sense if we think about it, right? Force is on this side of the equation, so if we increase that side, we have to do the same on the other, and we'd have to increase our work. Increase force, increase work. Makes sense. Similarly, if we do more distance, increase that distance, we have to increase the work. Right? Balancing out those two sides. I'm going to go on here to some calculation examples. So, you and two friends are on a road trip. Your car breaks down. The two of you get out and you each apply a force of 450 newtons to push your car 220 meters to the nearest mechanic. How much work did one person do? So to move this car, you are each applying that force of 450 newtons and pushing the car 220 meters. So we've got our same equation Work is force times distance. 
And so if we plug in our numbers, our force is 450 newtons times our distance of 220 meters. This is going to give us 99,000 joules. Definitely you can use a calculator. I happen to have just done this example, so I remembered the answer. The 450 newtons of force times our 220 meters of distance gives us 99,000 joules of work. It's a lot of work. Now we add a third person if you look at this next example. You and three friends are on a road trip. Your car breaks down, the three of you get out and each apply a force of 300 newtons to push your car 220 meters. So now as we've got that same distance, but now we've decreased the force. So what do you think is gonna happen to the work? Well, we have our same equation. So now, because there's three of you, each person only has to apply 300 newtons of force, still times our 220 meters. And this is going to give us 66,000 joules of work. Now think about this for a second. Which one required more work? Example one or two. Why? Take a second and think about that. So one thing we know is that force, or how much force required to move something, depends on how big it is, how much mass there is. So the bigger it is, the more force it requires. Similarly, each person in this situation could apply a certain amount of force. And since you're dividing the total force needed to move that car by three people instead of two, it was easier when you have three. Less work is done by each person. All right, last couple of examples here. You push a refrigerator with 50 newtons of force over a distance of 80 meters. What is the work done? You can take a second and pause the video to do this yourself. But we're using that same equation. Work is force times distance. So our work equals our force of 50 newtons times our distance of 80 meters. And this you can choose, you can do it on a calculator, you can do it in your head. 50 times 80 would give us 4,000. joules. Remember, we got to have that unit. Number means nothing if we don't have our unit. All right, now we push a refrigerator with 50 newtons of force over a distance of only 10 meters. What is the work done? You can take a second again and pause. Try it yourself. But in this case, our force times our distance our force has stayed the same as in our fourth example. So we still have 50 newtons of force, but this time we're only moving at 10 meters. So 50 times 10 we only have 500 joules. 50 times 10 would give us 500 joules. Last bit, what required more work? Example four or example five? 
Well, as you can see, example four definitely required more work, a lot more work. Why? Well, again, it had a bigger distance. So the further you have to move something, the more work is being done. I hope that this was helpful in understanding work, uh, how to explain it and how to calculate it. Uh, remember to ask your teacher if you have questions and have a great day.